five, four, three, two, one. Hi, and welcome to Lisburn Distillery TV, episode 18. I'm Colin Hopkins. And I'm Lydia Campbell. And in this week's show, we can feature a, an interview with Ashley Rag, who has some details about some special events coming up at Lisburn Distillery Football Club. We'll also be looking back to yet another disappointing weekend for the Whites, and also match highlights in the game at Memorial Park. We will then be looking back at what was an interesting weekend in the Premier Intermediate League, as well as giving you full updates on the Colin versus Lydia score challenge. And finally, we'll be catching up with Paul Sid Young and see his thoughts on the game from Saturday. So, Colin, I understand the game at Mill Meadow on Saturday mm -hmm. against Moyola Park mm -hmm. completed a bit of a milestone for yourself. Yeah, very much so, Lydia. Um, I've now been to all 36 Irish League grounds to, to follow the Whites. And, uh, I thought to myself it was nice to complete the set there on Saturday. It's just a pity it wasn't a, a better result to celebrate, but it's a nice milestone to achieve, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's one that I'd imagine quite a few people have actually yeah. been, been able to achieve, no matter what team they support. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Unfortunately, um, despite the, the the effort put in by the guys, it just the um, victory just wasn't meant to be. Yeah, there was no shortage of effort on Saturday, and, and certainly the players definitely want to get things mm. back on a winning path, shall we say. But, it's just not happening at this moment in time. Yeah. Well, before we actually discuss the game, uh, let us just turn our attentions to the match highlights. What did you make of Saturday's match then? I thought it was a really difficult one to take. Um, I thought we were the better team and up until they scored the, the goal. Yeah. Um, you know, 40 minutes we had, we arguably should have scored in the yeah. first couple of minutes mm -hmm. um, and that would have been the confidence that the guys need but you know, it wasn't to be. Uh, the goal we conceded was soft, um, yeah, header nice. at the back post that unfortunately Jack just couldn't do anything about you know a, a close range header like that and unfortunately once we get ourselves into that situation we're giving ourselves a very big mountain to climb whenever yeah. we're already low of confidence. Yeah it does seem that things are transpiring against us a wee bit at the moment um, Yeah. with a chance of a penalty on Saturday it wasn't given um, mm -hmm. if that had been in our favour we'd have scored it you might have had a different game to be honest but uh, yeah. and as the players push forward looking for an equaliser I think the gaps mm -hmm. that appear at the back were caught out a wee bit. Yeah and you know you could tell the, fur the further the game went the more players were pushing up 
I mean, St Stephen Curley was <laughs> was play, playing yeah. up top at the start. I'm unlucky um, not to score. Well. And he was he was very unlucky not to score. He came, came close twice, and then you know with the, the sending off as well. I mean, I don't believe it had a massive impact because both both teams lost a man. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it meant I thought we were in charge of the midfield in the first half, yeah. and up until that, unfortunately, we lost that edge and we lost that advantage. Yeah. After the game, you and I were both quite fortunate to spend mm -hmm. some time with the players. I mean, mm -hmm. attitude of them, very, very disappointed after the match. They were gutted. Yeah. I mean, Stephen Curley walked in and I said, are you all right? I just said, no, <laughs> I'm not yeah. all right. And, you know, he genuinely looked like a broken man after mm -hmm. that game. Um, I, I could name every single player who walked off the pitch just looking dejected. Yeah. And it's that proves to me that they are so frustrated at the minute. They care, and that's exactly what you need. You need players who care. And yes, I think we need a bit of luck at some stage, but chatting to, particularly it was the older ones, um, some of the younger guys had already gone off, um, like Sir Jody Lynch, um, Paul Young, Stephen Curley, um, Dan Dock, they were having a chat to us at the end. And, you know, what Jody said to me was, we are determined to put this right. We are so frustrated at the minute, and we are working so hard in training. I just thought that was really refreshing yeah. to hear that after defeat number seven. I know I've seen quite a few discovery teams over the years and mm -hmm. there's been times players to be honest with the attitude they couldn't have cared less sometimes yeah. about how the result goes, but those guys in Saturday were genuinely hurting yeah. the result and that, and that spurs yeah. us in good stead. Uh, one player who was sort of hurting after the game, but he actually still took the time out to have a chat with us, and that was Paul Young. And here's what he had to say to Lydia after the match. It's so Paul, fortunately another really difficult day for the club. What are, what are the thoughts in the dressing room after that one? Uh, all the boys are just got it to hard at the moment because they're, they're putting the effort in, as much effort as they can. It's just, it just doesn't seem to be going away at the minute. A few weeks decisions, we could have had but a few chances in the first half where we could have maybe done a bit better. Try to get a goal up because at the minute I think we're just we're getting the goal down and it's, it's hard to fight back whenever you're in a wee bit of a rut. So it is. Yeah, it seemed to me in the first half that, I mean, it was fairly even, but we, we certainly had the better chances than, than, than Myota did. And it, it, it was it was one back post header that, um, that that downed us. But it seemed that just from then it was it was hard for the boys to, to pick themselves up. What what happens whenever you just go 1-0 down? Is there, you know, is there a a plan? Is there, what what, what happens then? I don't think, I don't think there's, it's just a wee bit of a lapse of concentration. It's and then you're one nil down. We're getting into the wee position with, with the last six, seven weeks that's been going like that there. We're trying to get ourselves going again, but it just seems to be there's, there's things just aren't going away. We're not it's it's our it's our responsibility, it's a pleasure responsibility at the end of the day. And we'll have to get ourselves out of this hole. Just you're you're absolutely right in saying that, you know, it's it's not for lack of effort. I mean you in particular seem to be up and down this the sideline. Um, just until until you came off, um, what what do you do then? This time next week you're up against to to more at home. What 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 are the plans for that? The plans are we just need to get there training Tuesday and Thursday, put the effort in and try and go again next week. We need to try and get we need to try and get ahead in the match. I think just to get a wee bit of confidence going, maybe I'll G us up a wee bit and uh, just try and kick on. Well, th thanks for speaking to me today, Paul. So next up it's the time in the show when we review the results from last Saturday's Premier Intermediate League of matches. So if we look at, at, at the results here, you can see that although there weren't any major shocks on the day, um, as there has been in, in previous weeks, um, there was no doubt that the big talking point of the afternoon were the incidents in the game between Dundella and Newington. Yes indeed, uh, the game had to be abandoned early in the second half as a result of uh, an altercation involving one of the Newington players and the referee which followed a couple of settings off of Newington players so it'll be interesting to see how actually that one pans out sort of in terms of leaked, uh, leaked decisions and what actually happens in that actual game so we'll see how that happens over the next little week or so. Uh, the other big result in Saturday was uh, Donegal Celtic travelling to Newry City and winning 1-0 which means that the two sides are now tied on 35 points uh, as they vie for the final playoff spot to try and get into Championship 1. So that should be an interesting 
interesting end of the season for both those teams as well. Yeah, it should be. And if we continue to look at that at that um, league table, you can see the Whites have now slipped down to, to ninth. Um, in the standings and this could unfortunately be further affected. Uh, Sport and Leisure have two games this week. Um, first of all they play fellow strugglers Queens on Tuesday night and then they play other fellow strugglers New England on Thursday night which could obviously have an impact on where we stand um, on Saturday. Um, on Saturday we ha finally have another home game that is here at New Grosvenor Stadium at, um, against to Tobermore United. That game takes place at 3 o'clock um, so a reminder that is this weekend, that's the 8th of April, it's here at, at, at New Grosvenor and um, the game starts at 3 and I think the guys would really appreciate you uh, coming along to support them. Yeah, we really encourage you to get along to the game and support the Whites over the remainder of this. Definitely. The other thing we're going to look at now is obviously the Colin vs Lydia forecast yes. challenge. Uh, last week we talked about the three point gap mm -hmm. that exists mm -hmm. and that was ever so tight and the good news is that there was a three point swing this week. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately the three point swing went in your favour mm -hmm. and not in mine. Yep. So uh, you won five points to two which yeah. means you now have restored a, a six point lead. So uh, time's quickly running out so the fitting <laughs> shirt, I hate to admit it but it's getting ever closer. Yes. Who knows? Excellent. Couple of results. Excellent. I'll, I'll, I'll convert you to a full and fan before, before you know it. At least you're in the playoffs now. <laughs> Well, that's true. That's, uh, that's don't mind true. <laughs> <laughs> so if we look ahead, uh, obviously, to the, the fixtures this week, we've got mm -hmm. seven games we have to yep. sort of actually forecast this week, starting with one tomorrow night, then Thursday, and then the weekend's fixtures as well. So we'll start with tomorrow night. Uh, Sport and Leisure Swifts at home to Queen's, at bottom of the table, oh Clash, word. which is a massive six-pointer. That is a massive six-pointer, that, isn't it? Um, oh, I am going to say Sport and Leisure won Queen's now. It's a tight one. I think that might be a draw, and I'm going to say one each. One each, right. Okay. okay. Moving on to Thursday. Yep, so Thursday again, Sport and Leisure, catching up in all these home games. Yep. Um, and again, they're playing Newington, which is another uh, really crucial game for, for, for both sides. Um, I'm going to go for a draw on that one, and I want to say nil all. Oh, nil all. Mm -hmm. I think Sport and Leisure will win that game. I think Newington are going to be punctured a bit after the results on Saturday. <laughs> and I'm going to go Sport and Leisure to Newington nil. Okay. Um, okay. Moving on to Saturday's games then. First of all, we have Bambridge against Sport and Leisure again. <laughs> We're getting plenty of mentions this week. <laughs> um, my first? Yeah. Shouldn't be able to give this. Mm. Go ahead. Okay, it's actually you first, but all, all right. right, all right, I'll go for it, I'll go for it. Uh, Bambridge, 2-0 uh, Bambridge. I think they'll win as well. Um, I think they'll win 3-1. Okay, right. Okay. Next up, Donegal Celtic against Dundella, and I'll start the ball room with that one. Uh, Donegal Celtic have found their form again after having a bad slump, and I think they might just edge it against Dundella. I can see them winning 2-1. Yeah, I think that's going to be a tight one as well. I was actually going to go um, similar. Um, so I'm going to go 2-0. 2-0, mm -hmm. okay. And the last three games then, we've got Newington against Moyola Park. Well, we played Moyola last week. We know that they're dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, Newington are potentially going to be suffering a wee bit. I'm going to say Newington 0, Moyola Park 2. That's what was going to be my forecast, but let's, let's change it. I'm going to go with Moyola 1, uh, sorry, Newington 1, Moyola Park 3. Okay, you like your three ones. I do. I'll uh, get one right eventually. <laughs> Next one is Newry v Limavady. Newry, uh, that's a top of the table choice. Uh, Newry really do need to win this one. Though I'm not sure if they can or not. I can see that one being a draw and a high scoring draw to each. Okay, I'm going to go for a Limavady win. Um, Limavady 1, Newry 2. Sorry, Limavady 2, Newry 1. Okay. And the last one then, Queens versus Bangor. Uh, I think it's a bit of a dead rubber at that stage for Bangor. Queens have more to play for. Um, one nil Queens. I'd say Queens will win two nil. Two nil, right? Okay. Okay. Interesting. So we'll give you an update on that as the scores come through next week. Fingers crossed. I've got some of that six points <laughs> that produce as we head towards that season's conclusion. Hopefully not. <laughs>So next up on this Burn to Study TV, we have details on two extra special events which are going to be happening at the club before the end of the season. Yes, but instead of finding out the information from, from ourselves, we decided to invite in our main organiser in Ashley Rag, and here's what he had to say. 
Okay, Ashley, thanks very much for joining us tonight on this no Promise Sunday Television. Um, for those people who don't really come to this one to study that often, do you want to give us a bit of background as how long you've been supporting the club and things like that? Okay, um, well, first and foremost, I think I've been involved with our club now probably for about the best part of 20 years. Um, started coming here, I think, um, towards the end of primary school yeah. uh, with my brother and my dad. Um, the first match I went to was seeing who were then at the time uh, distillery, playing who were then at the time Newry Town, I think, on Boxing Day okay. um, a number of years ago. Uh, my involvement has sort of been up and down uh, in terms of how much I've been involved in the club in, in probably more recent years, but um, I have served as secretary for the club for um, for, for three or four seasons and also as a as a director on the board. The main person we brought in tonight, as you mm -hmm. mentioned there, I mean, you've been looking after sponsorship during the season, you know, yeah. basketballs, shirt sponsorship, um, mm -hmm. ball sponsorship, definitely. And we are holding this time around a sponsored recognition event, so we just wanted to yeah. tell us a about what's going to be happening with that. Okay, well, first and foremost, this year we've had a very, I mean, I mean a very generous response um, in terms of the, the sponsorship of the club. Um, first and foremost, to uh, the regular adverts we had in maybe the likes of the programme. Uh, uh, advertisements uh, we've had online, also through our kit sponsorship through the academy, our uh, our match sponsorships uh, on a, on a Saturday afternoon, match ball sponsorships, uh, uh, amongst other things as well. So we've really had a, a very positive response in any of the sponsorship over on this season, uh, and that's been true from the bottom end of the club with the junior teams right up to the you know the, the first team on a Saturday afternoon as it said. So what we'd really like to do this year, um, just to mark uh, and obviously. Um, you know, pay tribute and thanks to the people and the local businesses who have sponsored the club as we're running a, a, a recognition event. On it's on Thursday, the twenty seventh of April, which will be a couple of days uh, before our last match of the season. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be here in the social club. We have uh, local comedian Alan Irwin, uh, who's coming down as our, our guest for the evening, and it's a chance, obviously, to, to speak uh, and give thanks to the the people who supported the club this year um, financially and in other ways. Uh, and in addition to that. Like I said, we're going to have a, a buffet and a short presentation. Hopefully, better plans for for sponsorship next season as well. So, it's not so much uh, an opportunity to maybe um, sell sponsorship or uh, where we're looking to really, um, uh, you know, bring a new sponsorship for next season at this stage. Um, but we'll obviously be doing that in due course over the summer. Um, but at the moment, it's really just saying a big thank you to the the people who've helped us out this season because the sponsorship to the club it's it's an absolute lifeline, and and you know we, we'd be totally lost without it to be fair. So. I think there's also the possibility of a new kit launch that night for next season. So yeah, that's good. That always gets a bit of excitement. Yeah, I think we have. Uh, I think from what I can gather, we have a new uh, manufacturing place for next season. Um, we'll be hopefully launching and previewing uh, our new kit and also new training gear, which will again will cover the entire club um, from the first team, the under twenties, all the way down to the mini soccer next season. So again, it's very much time to keep uh, keep that all all together. You know, so uh, hopefully that'll be uh, well received as well. Would be a white kit. I hope so. Um, it'll certainly be certainly be white for the home kit. As right. for the away kit at this stage, uh, we'll have to see what uh, what Jed Owen has in store. Jed's had some interesting choices for away kits yeah. in recent years, so uh, we'll see what he has in store at the moment for uh, for next season. I think about a sneak peek of that away kit, and I must say it's, it's different. It's inter it's, it's, it's it's interesting. Um, the other aspect we're having an end of season dinner this year yeah. for the first time in, in mm -hmm. a long time. What's yeah. the story behind that one? Well, again, it was an opportunity where, because of the way this season has been with travelling support and support for the likes of the, uh, the social club and the coffee shop on a Saturday, we thought it would, be, again, be good to try and bring all that together um, and mark it uh, as, at the end of the season. Traditionally, in the past, we've always done awards at the end of the season in the club, but they've usually maybe been more of a fundraising angle or it's been an edit of races or something similar. So this year, we've decided that because of the fixtures as well, at this stage, are still unknown how the how they'll pan out between now and the end of uh, April on Saturday the 6th of May um, uh, here in our upstairs in our, our main social club uh, we have a, a, our awards night uh, that'll be the club awards, supporters club awards uh, and the under 20s awards uh, we'll have a, a three course meal with tea and coffee, uh, a glass of wine or two I'm sure uh, and a DJ and a raffle most other things so that's that's important for the players again to, it's, recognition is uh, a big part of a club moving forward and it's to recognise the efforts of the players, the coaching staff and also an opportunity for the supporters to come along and, and just to enjoy what should be a very a very enjoyable evening, you know.
That's just about it from another episode of Lisburn Distillery TV. But just before we leave you, we would just like to send our massive congratulations to the Lisburn Distillery's Academy's under 13s team who won the league Saturday past. Congratulations guys, really fantastic work. Um, so well done um, to Stevie Nutt, uh, our, our, our coach, as well as the rest of the players. Yes indeed guys, we're a club are very, very proud of your achievements, so well done. But also just like to say a big thank you to everybody who's got in touch with the show over the last seven days. First off, our good friend Jan Tholen, who's been in touch once again from Scandinavia to say he really appreciated the coverage on the Scandinavian visit from last weekend. And he's also asked to have a big special hi to Lydia's mum. <laughs> Classic Jan. <laughs> uh, steady on there, Jan. Steady on. I think Big, big Roy wouldn't be massively impressed with that, but um, <laughs> we'll, 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 let, we'll let it go just this once. Um, we'd also like to thank the former Sunday News sports editor, Colin McAlpin, who got in contact with us just to say um, how much he was enjoying the show. So th thanks for that, Colin. Really appreciate it. We'd also just like to say a big thank you to James I, who's messaged the club through an internet forum, just to say that he really is enjoying the TV show and he really appreciates the efforts we make to try and contact our supporters through this medium. So thanks for your support on that one, James. And folks, if you would like to get in contact with the show, we would absolutely lo love to hear from you. You can do so either at the email address that is shown on the screen right now, or you can contact us through um, Twitter or, or, or Facebook. We'd be more than happy to, to, to hear from you and give you a little, a, a little shout out. Um, but overall, guys, thank you very much for your continued support. So that brings us to the end of Lisburn to Sully TV, episode 18. I've been Colin Hopkins. I've been Lydia Campbell. Come, Come on, on, you whites. whites.